Good evening. Uh, welcome to the Cape Elizabeth School Board meeting for Tuesday, October 12, 1999. And the first item on our agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, moving um, on our agenda here, adjustments to the agenda. Seeing none, we'll move on and uh, look at approval of the September school board meeting minutes. Uh, there were two sets of minutes, one from September 14th and the other from September 28th. Any comments on those? If not, I'm going to move on to um, comments from our high school representatives. Hi. Um, since last meeting, things have really gotten going at the high school, athletics and clubs and everything. Um, the athletic teams are doing very well this fall. Girls soccer is 10-1, boys soccer is 8-4. Field hockey is 8-4. Girls cross country um, has run against Scarborough three times. Remember last time I told you that we were second to Scarborough, very close. We beat them once, we were second again twice. It's very close and the newspaper said it's gonna come down to who's having a good day at the state championship. Um, boys cross country has had some strong individual performances and for both boys and girls, a conference meet is this Thursday and that's the beginning of the championships. Uh, for clubs, a bunch of clubs have started since last meeting. Um, the literary magazine, the Bartleby um, Speech. There's a new computer club this year. I don't know anything about it, but uh, there's cultural exchange. Spanish club began today. The art club, Amnesty International, beginning soon. I heard an announcement today. Yearbooks are on sale. Mock trial has begun. There's a meeting tonight, and this year's trial is a civil case dealing with secondhand smoke and our first meet will be sometime in the beginning of November. Um, theater auditions for the fall show were last Thursday. There was a very large turnout and the cast was posted this morning. The dates for the show are November 18th, 19th, and 21st. Jazz band auditions were last week and the first rehearsal is tonight. This year there will be two jazz bands and three combos, which is one more combo than last year. Uh, the math team has started. We had our first meet last Wednesday, and we were fourth out of 12 teams in the small school division. Um, prom committee has begun. The juniors are up and running, planning for the prom, and we handed out a survey to juniors and seniors uh, a couple weeks ago asking, are you attending the prom? What would you like for the place, for the theme, DJ or band? Um, and so that's getting going. Um, and today, junior, sophomores and juniors took the PSAT, which was a change from last year because last year it was on Saturday, three hours on a Saturday morning. And from the student's point of view, this is very good that we don't have to take up a Saturday morning to do the PSAT. But um, I think if it went, okay, it wasn't great. But so that's done with. And um, okay. uh, this past Thursday, uh, we 22, uh, uh, high school students comprised of seniors, juniors, and sophomores went to the uh, middle school. And these are our uh, facilitators. These people have received training um, to facilitate in large group discussions. And uh, we did this last year. We went twice uh, to the middle school to have discussion groups. Um, it worked well last year. So um, with Mrs. Hutton, uh, we decided to do this again, um, except we'll go down every month. Um, and so each class, each, well, out of the 25, uh, facilitators. Um, there were two in each group and we met with uh, the advisor classes in eighth grade and um, we just got to, we had a, just a brief discussion um, just to how the year is going, just to get to know everybody and um, later in the year we'll just have some open discussions about issues that are facing them. Um, that's about it. And uh, also uh, the seniors took the SATs on Saturday. And uh, we're working hard for college applications and essays and 
It's already started, so that's all we have. Okay. Other questions for Elizabeth or John? Thank you very much. Good Thank job. You. And um, now we're going to move on to comments from our middle school representatives. Um, and I think uh, we'll need an introduction uh, when you come on up. I'm Anna Metzger, and I'm in eighth grade, and I was elected for school board rep. And I'm Whitney DeSena, and I was elected as an eighth grade rep, and I'm substituting for Leslie Price. Um, we have an upcoming dance this Friday the 15th, and a few days before we had passed out surveys to the 7th and 8th grade asking if they wanted different themes for the dance, so most people voted yes and we're having a Halloween dance this Friday. And we're looking to find an ice skating rink for the 5th and 6th grade social. This Thursday we're going to be discussing the sweatshirt sale and hot lunch this week. There's a movie theme. Tuesday was The Wizard of Oz. Wednesday's Star Wars. Thursday's Titanic. And Friday's The Jungle Book. Um, a few days ago, we had an evacuation drill in case we needed to get away from the school. And that went really well. And in sports, um, a fall sports end in two weeks. But sports have been going really well. The girls, girls and boys cross country. Um, the soccer team, tennis and field hockey. The fifth through eighth grade have been selling Sally Foster gift wrap, and the benefits go to the outdoor experience, which is Chwanky, Kiev, and local like cleanups for the fifth and eighth grade. Um, November 1st and 2nd, there was the first outdoor experience for the fifth graders. They went to Kettle Cove, and there's going to be a trick or treat for Halloween UNICEF and a sports project for Spanish. The sixth grade has been planting bulbs in the courtyards, going to the salt marsh, and doing a town project in Spanish. Um, the seventh grade, they're preparing for their trip to Kiev, which is from November 30th to December 3rd. And the speech and debate team is starting soon. Um, band and chorus auditions for the Honors Festival are coming up. and. Monday the 18th for the French and Spanish Club. They're making monster masks to celebrate the Day of the Dead, which is a Mer Mexican holiday, and they're making skeletons. Um, block scheduling will take place November 29th to December 6th. The reading test results came back today. Um, the MEAs will take place November 29th to December 3rd. And Thanksgiving, we have a week off. Um, family conferences for all grades are this Thursday and Friday. November 8th is our, the eighth grade's day of cleaning and working um, at Chewankee. And progress reports come out on Friday the 15th. And there's a middle school conference um, on November 10th. Students have been making clay reliefs to put on the walls in the middle school to help beautify the school. And the reliefs were done by Beth Kayata, Amelia Wiggins, Pamela Outwin, Christy Katsos, Michael Katsos, Erica Legg, Megan Barnes, Sydney Brown, and Emily McNeil. Um, fifth graders just started playing instruments and getting used to them, and so that's going well. And the speech and debate team started practicing last week and they have a meet November 1st in Freeport. Okay, other questions? Very good job, thank you so much. We're gonna move on to our next item, which is communications. Any communications? Under communications, there is a memo that you'll find uh, from Phyllis Schubert. Um, main school boards and attached with uh, the one uh, resolution and 78 proposed amendments which some look some look very minor just changing the way that uh, things were worded as far as middle school boards association um, but any comments I think Marie is the delegate that will be going to the assembly okay, okay. Um, if you don't have them now I think you share them with Marie 
had an opportunity to go through all of those amendments. Other items? Uh, seeing none, we'll move on to the superintendent's report, uh, request for sabbatical leave um, year 2000 to 2001. At this point, um, there are five individuals who have met the deadline of October 1st for informing uh, the board of, of their intent to possibly um, take a request a sabbatical leave. Um, the board's um, role would be at, by November 1st to announce whether or not and how, how many uh, sabbaticals might be funded for the, uh, the next school year. Um, and that you have until November 1st to do. Okay, and I think um, we would have something formal on that uh, at our workshop, which is October 20, 27. I was gonna say the 28th, 27. Um, update on the November 22nd uh, teacher workshop. The November plans for the November 22nd teacher workshop um, are moving ahead. Uh, I had a meeting this morning with an individual from Fairchild uh, Semiconductor. Uh, they have agreed to be a business partner for us in this project uh, to supply some expertise and to be involved as, as a, even have a member who participates as part of the planning team. I do have a few overheads that I'd like to share with you to kind of give you a broad picture of what kinds of things we'd like to accomplish on the, at the 22nd uh, workshop. Good. George, George that is the 26th. It is the 26th. On the workshop. The workshop is? The 26th. Your workshop. No, right. The um, school board the workshop meeting. Workshop. He's talking about the teacher workshop. Teacher workshop. I know, but he said the 27th. Oh, oh, okay. Incorrectly right. early. Oh, sorry about that. And we would have the sabbatical information. Right. He said the 27th. Oh, well, that's why. It's it would be, so is the school board workshop meeting incorrect? No. It's the 26th. It is the 26th, right. although it says the 27th. Okay. Oh, well. Sorry about that. Thank you. That's okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's your allowed mistake for this school year, Mary. <laughs> Do I get fired if I do <laughs> No. <laughs> Are you open? <laughs> do you want me to change this? I came down here this afternoon and didn't put tape on the floor, but. Can you see? I have a slide over. Can everyone see? Um, this process, as opposed to um, other processes that I that I know are in existence in other school districts, uh, looking at long-term planning as opposed to strategic planning and a lot of different ways, total quality management. A lot of them all get at the same kinds of issues. Um, we're looking at a future direction and trying to get that concept out there of, of looking uh, five to ten years out and what the school district, will, school district will look like and the kinds of things we'd like to see happen. And then just how do we plan for the future? Uh, hence the name that, that came future direction planning. Our hope is through this process uh, to be able to focus all of our energies, uh, take a look at uh, 
um, some key issues, some things that, that we can do as a district to help us get uh, to where we want to be uh, in five to ten years. Um, our workshop on the 22nd will help us to, to really define what it is that we all believe in, what the common values are, what our expectations are, um, and, and take a look at the kinds of things that are happening right now in the district and establish what those beliefs are. Um, our hope is always to establish and, and maintain quality standards. Um, and part of this that, that is incorporated in the follow through is to also look at resources and what your priorities are. Um, knowing there are not unlimited resources, but we have some things that we would like to accomplish, how through this process of planning can we most effectively use our, our resources that guarantees the return that we would like to see and the investment that we put into it. The reason for doing a large, we plan on having approximately 250 people involved in this process um, rather than um, which most, many of the systems that I know of that get involved with, with planning uh, usually take a small planning committee that would be representative, it would have a parent, it, it would have teachers, it would have staff members um, and not look at a, at a large kind of a workshop. Um, my, my thinking is and my experience has been is that when you bring in all of the stakeholders and you bring in a large group uh, and take a look at the future, you really build uh, an enthusiasm amongst those people that are in the room um, and really get a clear understanding from all of those people what we're going to do next. Um, and as we get into things like action planning and action research, we would continue to have um, many people involved in the process. Um, there would be a design team or what we're calling a future directions planning team that would drive the initiative, but when we even get into creating action teams for the different kinds of things we would like to see happen, we would have many diverse uh, people within the community participating on action teams um, as we go through this for several years to come. We're calling November 22nd setting the course and the activities that right now are planned for the, for the 22nd um, have to do, number one, we're calling it an historical scan. And it takes a look at the community and the district over time and the kinds of things that have happened. Um, the current reality is something else that we're going to look at, what's going on right now, looking at the environment and the kinds of things that are happening in the environment, what we value and believe and what our own personal visions are and what those shared themes are that come out of that. Specifically, um, we are going to start with looking at the history. Um, and a lot of this takes a look at the major events or the major decisions that have been made in the district over a period of time, what impact those decisions um, have on schools. Some of it might be legislation that was passed a lot of it might have to do with funding, um, but all those kinds of things are what the latest buzzword was in education, Sputnik, and a lot of those different things that have happened over time have had an effect on schools. Um, and take a look at what the positive aspects of that might be, take a look at the problem areas of some of those things that have happened, and many of these, those things can be internal that have happened within the organization, and some of those things were things that happened to us and we really didn't have much say in that. Our next step is to take a look at the current reality, what's happening right now, um, the things that we're proud of, and maybe some of the things that we might have a little bit of bad feeling about and really regret that, that, we're, that we're involved with. Um, and to really examine those elements and listen to the dialogue of all the participants about what's happening in the school system that people feel are getting the results that we want. Um, what are the elements of the school system that if we had the opportunity we would change? Uh, it's also an opportunity through this activity to celebrate some of the successes we've had, that we've done some good things and, and, and we should pat ourselves on the back for some of the good things that we've done. Um, through this activity we always look at those areas though that are in need of support and that might need additional 
attention. And again, in this area, there can be internal kinds of things, and they, or there can be things that are, that are external. An environmental scan, um, this is usually a fun activity. It takes a look at the forces in society that influence education. And we've all been through the different decades and the different things that have happened around us and how that's influenced education, how that's influenced uh, courses of studies that we've had in high schools, for example, um, the different things that have happened in the workplace uh, and the need for the kinds of workers uh, because of the changing workplace, and just exactly what is it that employers are seeking in students um, that we graduate from our schools. Toward the end of the day, we'll begin to get into values and beliefs. Um, what are the existing beliefs that people have? Uh, what is shared? What, as we talk, and if you take 250 people and put them at their individual tables, um, and there's a, a dialogue at those tables, um, just what is shared among all those individuals that are participating in the workshop. And all of this will, will serve as data as we begin to plan for the future. The last piece is personal vision and shared themes. <coughs> and anytime you, you begin to talk about where you're going in the future and the focus and what are those, those themes that are shared, and what should the focus of the school district be, um, you can't do that without looking at what each individual's personal vision is. And to do some sharing um, at the workshop uh, with the people at the tables about what their personal vision is, and then to talk about, okay, that is your personal vision, what kinds of things do we all share? What do we, we really want? and where do we need to direct our energies um, and really focus our attention on the few things that will really help us get to where we want to be. And this is just a um, diagram of where we're headed uh, with, this, with this activity. Um, the stakeholders would be all the participants that, are, that we plan on attending the workshop. The workshop will be organized with uh, tables of approximately eight individuals, which would be, people would be assigned to tables. There may be a parent, uh, some teachers, a community member, a student, um, to, that make up the, the, total, the total program, but at each individual table, our hope is to create diversity. Um, all those people will go through those activities that I've just mentioned, the historical stand, scan, looking at the current reality, the environmental scan, leading to values, beliefs, uh, talking about personal vision, and then finding out exactly by the time we leave that workshop, what are the things we have in common? What's the common focus that we have and what are the major themes that come into play? Then the process begins of establishing a future plan. Um, that's where the, the group of right now, it's, it's approximately, we've set up 21 individuals, which would include two school board members, uh, teachers, parent representative, a business partner at this point, um, that would really discuss what happened at the workshop and then how do you craft a plan for the future. Taking a look at our mission that we have as a school district, looking at what those themes were, what those beliefs were, and see where there's the agreement. Uh, my hope is that we're not going to get into a process of recrafting and, and wordsmithing uh, a mission statement, because I think the mission statement we have now is very good. Uh, but rather focus our energies on creating some, some action plans and specific actions uh, at, the, at the district level, uh, the building level, and even carrying, in, carrying it down to individual goals so that we're all headed in the same direction. And again, another schematic that the top squares, um, there could be three, four, five, how many themes might come out of this workshop. Um, the idea is how, how does that relate to the mission that we presently have? And then from that, um, what objectives can we create? Uh, what strategies can we um, 
then uh, will come out of our objectives and then the very specific action plans. Um, in this planning process, um, their action teams with action team leaders uh, would evolve and they would actually write specific action plans in looking at the kinds of things we would like to accomplish. At the bottom of all this, um, the beliefs, um, if you notice on the side, there are some parameters that I've put in. Um, because in any organization, there are some things that are just givens. And I think we need to say those up front. Um, what are the things that we're not going to change? What are the things that we believe in that are parameters that lock this into place? Thanks. Another piece um, in dealing with um, action plans, and, and these again would be the step-by-step -step process um, what are the activities that are going to take place that will help us get to where we want to be? Um, they need to relate to the given strategy. Um, and um, I say passes the sanity test just so that it makes, it's makes, it makes sense, that it's something that's doable. It's not out there too far that, yeah, that sounds great, but we'll never get there. It's something that, that we all say, yes, that can happen. This is an example of, as we get into the process, and this is later on in the process, um, as and this is, a, is an example of a cost-benefit analysis, which I think is valuable as you get into um, action plans and activities. Sometimes what school districts have done is they've got into an action planning process, create great action plans, but you never have the funds to make it happen. You don't go through the process of taking a look at and it may be something that's very costly, but if the benefits um, outweigh the cost, is it worth fighting for? Uh, so this is part of that process that, that action team leaders and the uh, Future Planning Direction Committee would have to go through in really looking at action plans in terms of can we really do it in terms of resources available. And this is the what the future uh, direction planning team is going to look like. Uh, and again, it's a mix. Uh, the one community member that you see in there would be someone who doesn't have children in the school district at this point in time. Uh, the teachers association is represented, support staff. Uh, and we're very fortunate, I think. And I think it's, it's good in this kind of an initiative to bring in some outside expertise. Uh, in, in, in terms of a business partner, um, and also <coughs> taking a look at how this is all going to be facilitated. That's, that's down the road, um, but we really need to think about, um, in order to get all this done and do it well, uh, you have to make sure that you go into it um, with, with a good plan, a good organizational plan on how everything's going to come together and that people are assigned certain things to do. What we're asking um, for in a, in a memo has gone out to, to staff uh, regarding the future and direction planning team um, so that they would have an idea of what that commitment would be. Um, the usual 3 o'clock to 4.30 once a month meetings tend not to, to yield a, a real good product. Um, there would be an orientation for this group initially but full day retreats tend to get more work done and accomplished. There might be assignments and subcommittees that come out of that, um, but for this particular team, uh, they really need to spend some hard time looking at the data that comes out of the workshop and helping to establish a plan. They would review the themes, the ob objectives, create some strategies, and look at how they're going to actually create the action planning process. If we go through this kind of an activity, I think what's important that especially it's a big risk when you invite so many people to be involved, um, the follow through is extremely important because you'll lose those people if they don't see that you're going to actually do something with the information from the workshop. Thank you. That's the plan where we, as we, as we speak now, uh, we do have a facilitator who will be facilitating the large group presentation who's had experience in, in doing large groups. 
Um, and we're also looking at, um, once this planning team gets together, um, then where do we need to go next? I think probably it's a good thing we're doing this in November, um, because then it might be something that comes to the school board that, okay, in order to make this work, if this was a worthwhile activity and this is the direction we need to go in, uh, what are the resources? What do you need to make it happen? And also listening to what, you know, what was said at that workshop and does that have any impact on, on the budget? Questions? Just a comment. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's, what a, it's a great way to get started, I think. I think what it does to it really gets, uh, my guess is there'll be a lot of enthusiasm. I think people are going to feel good about it. Um, and we'll get at that, that goal I know the board had uh, regarding that renewed enthusiasm and getting people really uh, excited uh, about education. Good. Had, um, one additional item, Tom? Yes, I had another item on notification of an employee um, resignation. And if you refer to my notes, this is, is somewhat complicated because originally it wasn't a resignation, um, and there needed to, we needed to make some changes um, in order to fill that, that gap. But this has become um, a resignation. And so there have been some other moves from the middle school to the high school uh, in terms of a, of a transfer and filling that position. And then we had to bring in a one-year replacement uh, of an ed tech uh, to replace the person at the middle school. But originally it was, it was, if you remember last, I think it was the last meeting you received a request for leave. Um, this is now a resignation. Okay. Um, you want, want to just give the specifics of that, or? Um, Sounds a little nebulous. Well, we have, I, I don't, we don't have the real specifics. Maybe Pete can share with, uh, share with you how that. Uh, I think by the specifics you mean the, the resignation. Yeah, who's doing what? Uh, oh, okay. Diane Brakely, uh, who has been uh, half, to, well, her load has uh, shifted uh, this past year, but she has been uh, in the previous uh, year a part-time teacher of uh, computers and a part-time ed tech uh, manning the computer lab. Uh, as I say, the proportion of those two things has shifted uh, in this past year. Uh, Diane has not been with the district for a long time, but uh, uh, take quality over quantity and, and uh, her year uh, and a uh, little bit more than that uh, with the district has been uh, outstanding. She is a, a true professional and uh, will be missed. Okay. Thanks, Pete. And, and we all received as part of our package a resignation letter which explained it. I, I just wanted to mm -hmm. give some details to the public so that they had some sense about what it was. Thanks. Um, we're going to move on now um, to the principal's reports and we'll start with Nancy at the middle school. Your middle school reps covered a lot of territory, Nancy. They I'm certainly not sure did, Mr. They left, Whistle. I'm not sure they left you much they material. They didn't leave me much, which I know will distress all of you greatly. But, <laughs> um, I do want to give my compliments to Whitney and Anna, who um, worked hard to get a report together today, and I think um, they'll do well. As Whitney explained, she was a replacement. Mm -hmm. Our other reporter, Leslie Pretty, is at a field hockey game at Lake Region. Hopefully, they're home by now, but um, they weren't not necessarily home at 7.30. So. Um, that's one of our furthest schools to play, and it takes us a while to get back. The first thing I want to share with you is that we were notified um, last week that for the third year in the row, we are the state champions. Uh, and this is good for middle schools. We don't have a lot of championships. But in the President's Council on Physical Fitness and Sports, it's something that all of our students participate in as part of our physical education program. And once again, we are the 1998-99 state champions. Obviously, that's a one-time thing, but this is our third year of winning that award. And they notified Andy Stroud of that, so we're passing that on to you to share with them. 
Um, one meeting that the girls did not um, cover the fifth grade. Tomorrow night we have a parents meeting with fifth grade students um, regarding the DARE program. Officer Gaspar is going to be running that with our team leader, Bruce Lynn. I'll also be there. But it's just to inform parents about the DARE program and what the objectives are. And we're trying to um, put some rejuvenated life into the program and help people, help people understand a little bit more what it's about. The Anna and Whitney did mention that Kiev, that the seventh grade is getting ready to go. That's November 29th that they'll be leaving and they'll be returning December 3rd. In preparation for that, um, on October 25th, we'll have a parent meeting that evening for parents to learn about Kiev. Charlie Harrington, one of the directors of Kiev, will be meeting with our seventh grade students at 1030. At 1.30, he's meeting with the eighth grade advisors because our current eighth graders talk so much about Kiev and their advisory groups that the eighth grade advisors decided they needed a little information on what this experience was last year. At 2.30, Charlie will be meeting with parents who have medical concern issues and then a parent informational night. We have mailed a letter home to all seventh grade families regarding Kiev and what if the purposes are and of all those important dates. As um, Anna and Whitney also said, just a reminder, we do have family conferences coming up. They will be the weekend of October 18th and the 25th. And the advisors in seventh and eighth grade will be conducting those and homeroom teachers in fifth and sixth grade. Conferences can be set up with all of the teachers that a student has at a parent's request um, during um, the school <coughs> time that we have scheduled for conferences and people will make themselves available. Also, just like to extend another invitation to you. Um, I will be making several of these invitations to you to come to our second annual middle level conference in southern Maine. We happen to be the host this year. It's on Wednesday, November 10th, and it goes from 3 to 8 p.m. Please feel free to stop by for any moment um, that you can. The conference, the keynote speakers for the kickoff part of the conference will be some of our students as the host school. Um, we have students make speeches to remind us all about why we come together every day in middle level education and hear from the students' point of view. So if you want the high point of the conference, that might be one of the high points. Um, there will be many other high points, but I know that will be very interesting as well, too. And please know that you're very welcome to come and just stop by for a walkthrough or for a few moments or to certainly attend the entire thing if your schedule permits that. In the middle school, we have been working on our task. I'll be updating you on hopefully the end product that we have on October 26th. And I say hopefully because our process has been slowed a little bit by some other things. These are our specific action plans to address the school board goals. And we've been doing it differently this year, gathering information from all of the teams and um, coming together and having it work. And we think we'll have that action plan all ready for the 26th. But we'll certainly update you on where we are. I would like to have us um, work on it a little bit longer if we need to and just bring you up to date because what we're trying to do is establish it in something so that all the teachers understand what we're doing and have ownership in the goals that we're working for so that they know what we're doing for assessment and curriculum, they know what we're doing for climate, and they feel good about that, and they can tell you how it's going to look for the students in whatever grade level they happen to represent. I think that's about it. The ladies did mention to you that our schedule variation this year, we're trying to coordinate that around other schedule interruptions. and or changes, I should word it more positively, schedule changes. Um, the first one occurs for the MEAs, and we're going to work on a schedule variation then. Uh, part of the seventh grade schedule variation will be that they'll spend the first five days of that rotation at Kiev. So um, we look forward to an exciting time and some extended learning periods at that time. And I think that about wraps up our current news, uh, since the ladies did such a thorough job. But if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Jen. <clears throat> Are any of those uh, Kiev meetings appropriate for just anyone who's curious about what the program is? Sure, I would say any of them are. Um, at 10.30 when he meets with the students, he really just kind of addresses the student issues and concerns. They like to know what, what the cabins are like, what the food is like, what the schedule of the program is, what to bring. Those, they get paperwork on all of this, but they just like to hear from him and it's a brief overview. But certainly, if anyone had a question about what is outdoor experience, what does it look like for seventh grade, the 7.30 parent meeting would be most appropriate. The 2.30 medical meeting is obviously quite specific to medical concerns, but any of those other meetings, certainly people are welcome to attend. 
Nancy, I read a, a very lengthy document about the MEA and changes based on the feedback that was received from the last round of MEAs. I think the thing that um, I missed somehow was whether or not this round of MEAs is going to incorporate those changes. Is, is that happening? I just received a publication today from the commissioner's office that right. it had a lot more of the things. I think it's the same one. And in reading over it, I wish I could tell you crystal clear that I was clear that yes, it is. I'm not sure. I know some of the changes they have incorporated, George, and that they're doing more of them. Last year, we just did the writing in November. This year, we're doing writing, reading, and help. So they're spreading it up to two weeks. They've given us some more flexibility with the time. Right. Last year, one of the testing days in March, we needed to continue after lunch. This year, they tell us we need to have these done by a certain time. Here's a suggestion of the time slots, but you can arrange them to fit your schedule. And for instance, we're going to try to fit them in at the middle school from 9 to 11. That allows our students who go to high school class, math classes to get there. So a few of those um, changes have been done. Some of the changes, quite honestly, that I'm most interested in is the timeliness of results and getting feedback. Right. And I certainly hope there's an improvement in that. Um, there's also supposed to be an year. overall reduction in the amount of time in terms of the testing and certain things that were found not to be relevant have been dropped right. and, out. And they have reduced some of the numbers of um, test questions and the types of questions, how many were more what we call an open constructed right. response right. to more some selected response, which is more like multiple choice. I think some of that will come in the proof when we do it as it's set up. It appears that each day it's less time than most of the days were last year that we had to allot for it. So hopefully we'll realize those changes. We're looking forward to the changes anyway. They sounded good anyway. May I ask a yes. question? John. Uh, would you please inform the public what is the objective and the goals of MEAs? And is it something that's being done to satisfy the state, or is it something that you can relate to and adjust your teaching? Well, gosh, and I thought the longest thing tonight was going to be Pete's report. Let's see. Um, would you like to start at the beginning of the MEAs or um, kind of thing? Actually, the MEAs are a state-mandated test, and it depends on who you talk to. Originally, I think they were developed to help make sure that all Maine school children had equal access to an appropriate and high standard education. And we've been giving them now since, I believe, 1984, 85, something like that. The Results have been reported publicly, and part of because of the public reporting, they have been done in a way that um, would make it appear that in Cape Elizabeth we can compare ourselves to some other town in Maine. Uh, for people who design and construct the tests, some of that comparison is, is valid, and some of it is interesting, uh, but may not be as valid. Right now, what we seem to be into a, a stage now, John, of where the MEAs are to be one of the indicators that we would have that we are meeting or surpassing the main state learning results. But they are one piece of the indication. The biggest piece of indication would come from our comprehensive testing system that we are charged to develop within our own district. But right now, they have made a they are making great strides and attempting to make great strides to connect them to the performance indicators, which are part of the main learning results. So that's, that's what the intention is and what they're supposed to do. Um, and we get, mostly what we get for results are results that inform us into teaching strategies and things, not individual performance results. And that's one of the things that's different than perhaps some of the other testing we've been involved in. I, but I'm sure other people can add other parts. I, I can go. I have many MEA stories, but I don't want to take up all of the time with all of them. The um, the the document that we're talking about. I'm, I'm sure that we can get a copy of that to you, John, if you haven't seen it. But it, um, I think it does a pretty good job of um, talking about how to make the testing more relevant, how to tie it in, tie the test um, in better with the main learning results and how to be more expeditious about getting results back so that they're actually more usable. Right. Well, I think the explanation is helpful not only to the students and the parents and the, and the public as to why the, the time is being taken out of the classroom to administer these and have them uh, scaled or rated. Or, uh, I recall when my children were in school, we used to get these graphs that we didn't understand what they were all about. But if you hit a certain level, I guess the kids were doing all right, they were learning. Mm -hmm. But allow, you tie it into the main learning results, I think that's excellent. If the kids are informed of that, that's why they're 
being exposed to this. I think that's very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions for Nancy? Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Um, Pon Cove, Tom. Good evening. Um, let me take a few minutes to bring you up on some of the activities at Pond Cove. The uh, classroom teachers are spending more time at this time of the year preparing for parent-teacher conferences by getting really involved with assessments, and we do that a couple of different ways. Grades two, three, and four, apropos of the MEA, uh, spend a day scoring writing prompts that they give all the kids in grades two, three, and four, and using the MEA standards for judging uh, kids' writing. They um, uh, go through the process and then um, rate the students writing, uh, report to me, and be able to report to all the parents about how the kids are doing in writing. Uh, in K and 1, it's a little different. Teachers have time during the day to do individual assessments. Also, uh, speaking of assessments, a team from the middle school and from Pond Cove are both uh, involved with the electronic learning marketplace. That's E-ELM or ELMS. The uh, facilitators came, I think, last week or two weeks ago to work with that team. And I want to thank Gary Lenoy for uh, writing the grant and getting the finances to support it because the subs and other things will be paid for. This workshop and training is to help teachers come up with assessments that can be on computers and shared with other people. The next round of this, for teachers who are interested, they can pursue sharing those assessments on the uh, ELM website and they'll be paid stipends for their work and any ones that are used on the website. Other things happening at Pond Cove that uh, we talked about last year, we wanted to keep an eye on this year. We've checked with the looping teachers at faculty meetings to make sure they're happy, and so far they want to know what the question is. Everything is fine and normal at this time of the year, but the question is, uh, what do they need to be successful next year? Do they need to go to conferences? Do they need uh, time over the summer to look at next year's curriculum and so on? But, but so far, so good with that. The other um, ongoing project is the reading position that we have sort of restructured internally with Deborah Jordan Pearson and Suzanne Hamilton, and so far so good. I think we all knew last year that the first priority would be to meet the needs of those kids who were not quite up to the standards, and through close collaboration with teachers and with parents, that is in fact what's happening. Uh, it, Deborah Jordan Pearson, too, has been very proactive at the kindergarten, helping with uh, strategies with kids and with the teachers and the whole class to get those kids um, all set before they come to first grade. We've also found um, through this, by adding this position, that there's a cleaner connection between the special education process, the teacher assistance team, and other events going on in the classroom. And um, those meetings tend to go a little bit better now because parents feel that we're doing a little bit more in that, those areas to, to support their kids' learnings. The Climate Committee, which I think I mentioned to you before, uh, met again last week, and we've identified three areas, um, the three top priorities, I think we're representing the whole school community, which would be having some sense of what um, common classroom ex expectations would be in every classroom for discipline and turning and work and so on in a positive way. Um, expectations in the common areas that we call them, which would be bus and recess and the halls and lunchroom, every place outside the classroom, and social interactions in general. This uh, team includes uh, parents, staff members, uh, myself, and other people. The other um, committee that is meeting regularly now that includes parents is the nutrition team. This started last spring in an effort, it was really Paula, at Paula Harris's suggestion, to look at uniting our health curriculum with food services and parent education to see what we could do in that area. And we had a very good meeting the other day. And it just, uh, I guess, following the theory that little things can make a difference, um, new fence on the playground and the PCPA, painting hopscotch here and there, providing little equipment has had a ripple effect on the playground. The PCPA is going to concentrate on fundraising this year for the playground and working with the uh, school and the community. I have high hopes for that um, to get uh, to improve the playground. And one other thing, um, Sarah Lewis, a second grade teacher, now knows the value of wearing a bike helmet. She was knocked off her bike two weeks ago on the way to work. She commutes to uh, Pond Cove by bike, and fortunately, everything is OK. She's back at school and doing just fine. But it was a scary moment for everybody in Pond Cove. And I'm sure John has a question about the Red Sox, but we could probably do that later. 
He does, I can tell. Any non-Red Sox questions? Questions for Tom. Thanks, Tom. Yep. Moving on to the high school, Pete. Testing seems to be an appropriate theme for the evening. Um, Elizabeth and John did a good job of, of detailing all of the various activities that are going on at the high school. One that they mentioned, I think, uh, just bears a reminder. We did do the PSAT testing uh, today, and uh, while uh, student social planning for Saturday mornings is always an important item on, uh, on, on our agenda. This was not the particular driving force for moving the uh, PSATs to Tuesday this year. If you remember last year, I recommended that we uh, stop using instructional time to, do, uh, to, to have students take the CTP battery of tests at the same time that the juniors were uh, taking the MEAs. We had ninth and 10th graders involved in approximately 10 hours of CTP uh, tests, the comprehensive testing program tests. We felt that we were getting uh, limited value from those. Uh, and as, as I say, I had recommended uh, that, we, uh, that we do away with that testing. At the same time, we wanted to make sure that our students are having the, kind, the kinds of experience that they're going to need for uh, taking tests that are going to be very important to them, namely, uh, the, the uh, SAT types of, of tests. And so we wanted to go full out uh, this year and encourage as many uh, sophomores as well as juniors to take the PSAT. In past years, uh, we have had some sophomores taking the PSATs, um, but the, it was uh, mainly juniors that were taking them on a Saturday morning. We were very successful uh, in that drive and that uh, Almost all of the juniors took it, and a very, very high percentage of the 10th grade, current 10th grade, took the PSATs. Um, we'll uh, wait and see what their um, experience is, whether they feel that they gained from it. But the, the, uh, one of the, the really positive factors of the PSAT is that students receive a very detailed breakdown uh, to the point of which questions they missed, which questions they uh, answered correctly, uh, they can see those questions uh, and get a very uh, immediate picture of what particular areas they may need to bolster if they're going to find greater success uh, in the SAT testing. So uh, I think kudos are, are due to, uh, to Sharon Merrill and Belinda Snell, Stephanie Betzel, Rennie Donovan, Dwight Ely uh, for a lot of planning that went into uh, having the 10th and 11th grade involved in approximately three hours of testing and administration uh, this morning while disrupting the rest of the uh, school uh, minimally. Uh, I think it went very smoothly. Uh, be eager to see their results. Along those uh, same lines, we have uh, in the past month received very good news, I think, on several testing fronts. Uh, regarding last year's results, this is the time of the, usually the end of the summer, uh, beginning of the fall is when we receive information on uh, last year's testing of advanced placement, uh, SAT results for last year's graduating class when they finally summarize uh, all of those. And we start receiving word of uh, uh, national merit recognition, which is tied to the PSATs from last year. I'll start with the, uh, with the SAT results. Um, I will have this in, in writing uh, for you, uh, but just to, uh, to, to mention quickly, uh, in the verbal area, and as you know, the SAT range is 200 to 800. The national mean in the, in the uh, verbal area is 505. The state of Maine mean this past year was 507. Cape Elizabeth High School mean was 558, significantly above the uh, national and state means. In the area of mathematics, the national mean was 511, the state of Maine mean was 503, and the Cape Elizabeth High School mean was 577, even more significantly above the national means. I think those results are, are very solid, very strong. Tied to not to the SAT performance, but to the PSAT performance. And this time, those results were last year's graduating class, the class of 99. The national merit uh, results, uh, we're, we're hearing about the uh, number of uh, semifinalists that we will have and the number of commended students. Those are this year's seniors, 
because they took the PSAT as a junior last year. Once again, we're very strongly represented in those numbers with three semifinalists and eight uh, students who are commended for their performance. A commended student is in the top 5% uh, of scores uh, in the state and the, uh, the semifinalists are generally in the top 1.5 to 2% of scores. So again, very strong uh, showing there by this year's senior class, very similar to what we had last year. Finally, our advanced placement uh, scores uh, have come in, and I think we have reason to feel very good there also for a number of reasons. Uh, we had small increases in the total number of actual candidates that were sitting for exams. Last year, I'm sorry, uh, 98, 97-98, uh, uh, we had 48 uh, candidates. So in the spring of, of, of 98, we had 48 candidates, and they were sitting for 56 <coughs> different exams. I'm sorry, 65 different exams. This year, uh, this past spring, we had 51 candidates, uh, so only three candidates more, but sitting for a total of 82 exams. So an increase in the number of uh, advanced placement exams that are being taken of 17 uh, which would be quickly, uh, uh, probably about an increase of about uh, 25, 20, 20% or so. Um, even uh, uh, better is the increase. Those scores are ranged uh, from one to five. Scores of three, four, and five are generally recognized as passes uh, and colleges start awarding advanced standing, advanced credit, um, waiver of course requirements uh, at the level of, of three. Our percentage has uh, steadily been very high, but uh, this year uh, is, is uh, particularly strong. Last spring, 86% of the uh, exams that were taken uh, earned a score of three or above. This year, we went to 89%. Uh, I would also say that we're very close to 100, really the the one course that, uh, that, that affects the, that percentage is a course where we're probably trying to do it, trying to do too much too quickly, and that's the AP government class where students are often taking it in the second semester. The exam is in May, uh, so they really are only having uh, three months of study in, in preparing for it, and I think that's something we'll look at to see whether we need a longer amount of time. Uh, outside of that area, um, to say the results are extremely strong and I think that uh, both the students and faculty can feel very proud of the uh, um, of those results. As uh, Nancy mentioned uh, the MEA uh, test the first uh, half of the MEA test will be given in the high school during the uh, two weeks after the Thanksgiving holiday. Um, they, we will not use the entire two weeks. Uh, we're developing the schedule now, I suspect we'll use uh, either three or four days uh, for uh, approximately a, an hour and a half each uh, day. Um, I would uh, echo what Nancy said there. One of the changes that is evident is that they've cut down on the total time, uh, but we'll have to wait and see whether content changes are also there and reporting changes. Parent conferences are the 21st and 22nd in the high school. Parents have received a letter uh, explaining uh, how to make appointments. Uh, that process began in earnest today as the phones were ringing off the hook with uh, appointments. We are uh, offering appointments from noon until 8 on Thursday the 21st and 7 a.m. until 10.30 on the 22nd. Those are the official times and obviously many teachers are uh, making all kinds of effort to try to fit in as many people as they can, even if it means being outside of those times. I think that uh, is it for questions. Questions for Pete? No questions, but I would just like to uh, publicly extend congratulations to high school senior Alyssa Hayes, who came in second in the state school girl golf tournament this past weekend. The individual uh, honors came in second place. Very solid golfer, and uh, she'll be one of the leaders of, of the uh, golf team this Saturday for the state team championship tournament. No vested interest there, is there? None whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Other questions for Pete? Comments? Thanks, Pete. 
We'll move on to committee reports, and we'll start with um, the Finance Subcommittee. Keith. Uh, the Finance Committee met uh, this evening before this meeting. Uh, short meeting. We discussed, uh, we signed the warrants. Uh, we discussed the 1999-2000 uh, tax rate, uh, and uh, manager Michael McGovern came in and reported to us about a, uh, an apparent discrepancy in the tax rate, and uh, he's going to further explain that, uh, I guess, in an upcoming uh, courier. Uh, I just want to say one thing about that is uh, our tax rate for this current year for the school is $14.52 for the, that's per thousand for the school and last year it was $14.60 so we are operating on a reduction this year which I have to keep saying that because that's the first time in 10 years that that's happened. Uh, we have in our hands the 1998-1999 uh, audit report. Uh, uh, and uh, it, there's a lot of praise and thanks to our business manager, Pauline and Portria. Uh, the audit continues to go smoothly and, uh, and their books are well kept. Uh, we've also reviewed the appropriation reports and then adjourned the meeting. Thank you, Keith. Uh, moving on to the committee, uh, next committee report, which is the policy subcommittee. Kevin. Policy subcommittee met uh, with uh, Dr. Forcella being the only administrator available, everyone else had uh, other, other things going on. We touched briefly on some of the issues that uh, we think we will be addressing uh, this year. Uh, Tom has uh, been obtaining some uh, model policies from the Maine School Board Association. Uh, we will meet again on October 14th at 8.30 in the morning at the William Jordan Conference Room, uh, at which point we will roll up our sleeves and get to work on the uh, policy work for the year. Thanks, Kevin. Um, moving on now to unfinished business, of which I'm not sure that there are or is any. Um, there are any items there. Um, new business, uh, consideration of the superintendent's nominations to athletic fee positions for the fall and winter 99-2000. You have in front of you a number of uh, nominations for returning coaches uh, for the winter season at the high school, uh, two new positions, and two positions at the, uh, at the middle school. Um, rather than read through them all, I think they're self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. I'd like to recommend those for consideration. Okay. Um, is there a motion? <coughs> Jim? I would move that we uh, confirm the superintendent's recommendations for uh, his nominations to the athletic fee positions for the fall and winter of 1999 2000. Okay, thank you. Second, Marie, are there questions or comments about this recommendation, nominations? Seeing none, all those in favor? Seven zero. Um, consideration, Tom, of nominations to co-curricular fee positions. Similarly, you have in front of you nominations to um, uh, co-curricular positions. One special note I would like to make: if you if you look at the memo from Pete Dawson, uh, there is also a, a change. So, in addition to that. Um, that originally two people were going to Hannah Jones and Susan Gifford were sharing a position, uh, but because of one person taking on a speech position, that other will not be shared, and Susan Gifford will assume total responsibility for the uh, literary magazine. Okay. Um, is there a motion? <coughs> this includes the um, ones from Claire as well, right? Right. Yes. Yep. It's all inclusive. Yep. Is there a motion? Jen? I move that we accept the superintendent's nomination for co curricular fee position. Second? Second. Keith. Um, are there questions about any of the uh, nominations for co curricular? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7 0. Um, the next item uh, is actually consideration of the superintendent's request to enter executive session 
uh, for discussion of uh, teacher negotiations. And before we uh, do that, I'd like to just review the um, upcoming dates to remember. The school board policy subcommittee meeting, as Kevin said, is going to be on Thursday, October 14th at 8.30 in the morning in the William Jordan Conference Room. Uh, the school board workshop meeting is indeed on the 26th of October. And, um, and that's at 7 p.m. in the high school library. The topics will be budget priorities for FY 2001 and update on goals for this year. Um, the finance subcommittee meeting will be Tuesday, November 9th, 6.30, William Jordan Conference Room, followed by the regular school board meeting, uh, 7.30 here in the chambers. Um, we have a request for the superintendent to ex enter executive session for purposes of di discussing teacher negotiations. So moved by Kevin, seconded by Keith. Um, any comments or questions? All those in favor? 7-0. Thank you very much. We will not be coming back into public session.